So, um, hi, I'm Christoph. I'm a Belgian, and I'm a bioengineer. <laughs> and you might ask yourself what I'm doing here, <laughs> but it's a very long story. But um, I would like to start with um, a statement. And um, it's one that you probably already know. It's life is very short. And, um, and like, there's been a couple of things in my life in the, the past few years that were quite, quite big events. And that helped me realize, like, yes, life is very short. And we've, uh, we've got very little time on this planet. And um, so my question to you, or my challenge to you, is to take out of this session is, what are you going to do with your life in this very short time that you have? Um, so this, this session is going to be a little bit of a, an old man's talk. Um, my wife says that I'm getting gray. Um, <clears throat> so I feel <laughs> entitled to doing an old man's talk. Uh, <laughs> and it's going to be about our story and how we've gotten to where we are right now. And, um, and, and my story starts in 2006 in Brussels. And um, um, I, as I said, I was a bioengineer and I've been doing uh, consulting for biotech companies. And we're doing like sales and marketing, making a few websites. And, um, and, and there, we were doing that in Drupal uh, because you know, I was looking for open source software and, and Drupal looked like a really cool tool. And, um, and just when I was, I was living in Hungary at the time, and when I was going back home, I saw that there was a Drupal event in Brussels, DrupalCon, and it was free, <laughs> epic win. So, you know, three days of Drupal, you know, why not? So I went there and it was amazing. And it totally blew me away. Um, because I, you know, I'm not a developer. I'm, uh, I'm I, I, at that time, I was a site builder that was trying to do some theming. <laughs> Um, but, you know, very limited stuff, some, some design in GIMP, <laughs> like really low cost. Uh, and, um, and, and there I was sitting at this table, and around the table there's Gabor, Hoichi, Dries, uh, CHX, um, and a bunch of other people. And we're talking about multilingual, and I'm sitting there like, wow, this is awesome. <laughs> I want to be part of this. And that's how my Drupal journey started. And... Um, um, so, if you want to tweet, that's my handle, K van Tomme, and that's my company, and that's my product. Um, and I would like to start with the, the start of our journey with this. So, first of all, the fact that I'm here talking about products does not mean that I don't like being a consultant. I like making, I, I like making websites for people. I like helping people that don't know how to do it, uh, and and providing service and and kind of guiding them. And, you know, it's, it's fun to be an expert. Um, and that's great. That's a great feeling. But there's a, few, there's a few problems with that. First one is, oh, the, oops. The first one is this. People expect to pay you by the hour. And, um, okay, you know, that could be a fair deal. But the real problem is that. Uh, I don't know if you know what is a zero-sum game. I, like, you know, right? It's from game theory that um, a zero-sum game, uh, basically, as a consultant, you're in a zero-sum game both with your customers and your employees because your customers want to pay as little as possible and your employees want to get as much as possible. And you're stuck in the middle. And, you know, you can, you can manage that and, and you can figure a way out and, like, have some younger people that start a bit lower and then grow up. And, but it's, you know you're always stuck there. And you're always thinking about, are we going to go over budget if you do fixed price um, projects? Are we, going to, um, you know, are we going to be able to make enough money to pay for all these people? And it's just, um, it's, it's rather unpredictable. And you're, uh, come on. And you're really stuck in the middle. There's another problem. Because if you, I, who here has a consulting company? Like, yeah? Who works with employees? Okay. So uh, then you probably know this. <laughs> this is what customers want. They want this super samurai team that's going to come in, that knows everything, and then does really, really simple things. 
Like, but the problem is that your developers, they want to do new stuff. They don't want to be click at monkeys. Uh, that's what I call it. Like now in Drupal, like site building, if you're doing it the right way, is a lot about clicking. But the problem is that because of the deployment workflow, you need people that know how to handle Git, how to commit stuff, how to do features and all that stuff. And so you need quite high skilled people doing jobs that they don't necessarily like that much because it's always, you know, it's fairly monotone. It's, it's you know, there's not that much development work going on if you're doing it right. <laughs> and um, so then like, so there's those two problems. And so, well, the question then is like, are products better? And I think every, uh, who here has uh, read Tim Ferriss, for the four hour work week? Yeah, a lot of, like, I guess most everybody, right? That's why you're coming to this talk. <laughs> um, the, the, the ugly truth is that even Tim Ferriss is working 80 hour weeks. <laughs> He's not working four hour weeks. <laughs> so, um, so yes, there's that dream that you can find a little niche and build a product and be happy forever. And the thing is, the truth is that actually that's probably not all that right. And I, so my talk is going to be partially a cautionary tale where I, um, I, I'm not telling that you shouldn't do products, but you should be careful. And it's not that rosy as often people assume that it is. Uh, and it's a very, very hard process. And, and, and there's a lot of risk, um, uh, more risk than in consulting. Um, you can take out some risk with um, you know, what they call the lean startup methodology. Like who, everybody knows that, I, I guess, or not? Anybody who doesn't know about lean startups and minimal viable products? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll quickly define. So the idea is that um, there was a book that came out, I think it was the lean, I think it was actually called the lean startup, the title of the book, uh, in which a new methodology was explained for making products, where basically instead of figuring out some really crazy big dream and then building, building, building for ages, uh, and then launching and seeing that it doesn't work because the customers don't want to buy it, that you, you start with a small product, something like the smallest possible product, the minimal viable product that people want to pay you money for. And then you continue from there so that you're, you're trying to find something that people want to buy and then, uh, and then after that, you continue building it so that you don't end up spending a lot of money and time building something that nobody wants. The problem with that, <laughs> and okay, that's a, probably a really good idea. Uh, and if you haven't heard of it before uh, and you want to make a product, you should definitely read that book. But um, lean startup methodology, it's, well, it's being used a lot lately to make really silly products. Uh, like, you know, <laughs> um, and, and yes, if you can find a small niche and make a product that works for that niche and, gets, and, and that works for you, that's great. But at the same time, you know, you have people saying like, we're changing the world with an app that helps you schedule the time for your house cleaner. And <laughs> that's probably not really world changing or it's not really, I don't know if that's a good way of spending your time uh, on your very limited time on this earth. <laughs> So what's a better way of doing this? Um, and then, so the way that we've approached that is basically doing this product service synergy thing. And um, so we started as a consulting company and very early on we, we were like, whenever we had some downtime, we were doing product ideas and trying different things. Uh, um, we like really in the early days, we did some open atrium work. I don't know who here remembers open atrium? Yeah, okay. <laughs> So, um, and we were one of the first Drupal companies to really, you know, buy into that dream. And like we were making features, we had a feature server and it was all grand and no customers came. Uh, <laughs> but um, um, because we were doing that kind of things, we, we learned a lot and, and our developers um, got better uh, at, at more engineering stuff, like thinking product wise, um, that kind of thing. So, so it actually, um, while we made a lot of waste doing, trying out a lot of different things, 
um, I'd like to at least explain it to myself <laughs> that actually that was useful because it helped us to become a better service company and vice versa. Uh, by, um, by being a service company, we were in the markets, getting to know people, learning about things that might be interesting products. Because I think that it's possible to make um, a sort of symbiosis between products and services in, in, a, in a service company like all of you, uh, where um, the product that you're building or the ideas that you're trying, that you're exploring, um, you blog about and you talk to the world about, and then some customers find out about that and then come to you and, you know, you, you can do more services, uh, and at the same time, it helps you to explore uh, kind of like what, what problem space would be interesting to work in. Um, you know what this is? This is a lichen. You know why I put that slide up? It's a symbiont, yes. Uh, this is one of the most successful uh, organisms on this earth. Yeah, I'm a bioengineer, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, and it's basically, it's a fungi and an algae living together. Like it, it can be algae or um, photosynthetic uh, bacteria living together. Um, and they're, you know, where there's no plants, they're still living. Uh, reindeers eat this stuff. Um, so lichens. You learned that today. <laughs> uh, and as a service company, um, you, you basically... Are you familiar? Well, I, I think you might be familiar with the concept of a runway. That's what startups um, call how much time they have until they have to close the books. And basically, with a consulting company, um, if, like, okay, you don't have infinite runway because your people also are expecting growth, um, but you have a much longer runway than if you would have got, taken cash from someone or saved up some cash and then, you know, try to do something. Um, it's a bit tricky to balance it all out, but it gives you, if, you're, if you've grown to a certain size, like for us, this really started working once we were a bit bigger. Like we're now uh, 17 people, I think. And um, yeah, it's, it's, only, it's only once we, we crossed like 10 people that we had some time, like, you know, that we could have one person doing this stuff uh, and, and that we could dedicate someone to, to working on a product. Um, and then, basically, what you end up with is uh, the ultimate bootstrapping machine. And um, I don't know if you know the story about bootstrapping, um, but that's um, the story about uh, Baron von Munchausen, who pulls himself at his shoelaces out of the mud. That's what you're doing. <laughs> you're building something out of nothing with no resources. It's impossible. <laughs> but still, you're doing it. But... So we were doing all of this, uh, and um, the funniest thing happened. We ended up doing more and more around documentation, the D word, the evil D word. And <laughs> that's not something developers get too excited about, unfortunately. <laughs> and, and I was also myself thinking, like, why the hell are we doing documentation products? Why, why are we in this space? How did we end up here? And, and, and is this really worth it? Is this really the thing that we want to do? And um, like, why are we doing this? Because I was not really, really clear about um, life purpose, like what I want to reach in this world with my limited time that I have. Um, I always thought, like, or, you know, you, you, you read about this stuff and people say, like, you know, you have to make a dent in the universe. <laughs> and I'm, yeah, I'm just like, yeah, that, that, that kind of sounds cool to make something really huge and big and, and you know, make an impact on the world and, and have posterity talk about you. But if you think about it, um, a dent in the universe is just as empty as money. It's a resource. Money and, a dent, and, and fame are both resources. They should not be goals into themselves. If you use them as your goals, you're probably going to have a very poor life. Um, like if, if this is what you're, you know, if your whole life energy you're going to be spending on either becoming famous or getting rich, and 
you, you're not, you don't know what you're going to do with that fame or richdom, then probably you're doing it wrong. Or at least that's what I think. Because, and then, and then I started thinking like, okay, so what is then better? Should I be the tree trunk, like, you know, the big project? Or should I stay and, stay and be a leaf? Uh, or the roots that is feeding the ecosystem? Um, should I st um, stay put in the consulting business? Because I am doing valuable stuff. I am contributing to the world and helping people. Um, it's just not on that big a scale, but at the same time, it is contributing to the larger organism that, that our community is. Um, and, and then I realized that you know, even people that are not really necessarily um, thinking about this stuff, that are not really thinking about what are they doing with their life, even they are contributing every day to the fabric that's around us. Um, if, you're, if you're doing any job, what you're doing is you're basically helping the economy, you're growing the economy, and the economy is, is what is giving us this life that we have today. If you are just a thinking being in society, you are a substrate for culture. You are, even if you're not contributing, even if you're not producing, you are still a resonance uh, body that is uh, resonating with the culture that is around us. Um, even if you don't do anything else, your body, um, once it decays, is part of, of nature. So we cannot escape being part of this bigger thing that's around us, of society that's, that's, that we are part of. Um, so you might as well try to do something big. <laughs> Now, <laughs> the tech crunch myth. Um, first, I have to make a confession. I have submitted a proposal for the tech crunch event that's happening next Tuesday here in Austin. <laughs> so I'm trying to get, <laughs> I'm trying to pitch in front of tech crunch. Um, but I would like to debunk one myth um, that is very pervasive in, in the startup world and in, in the IT sector in particular. It's this idea that equates your value as a person and as a startup and as a company with the amount of money that you've raised. And, and that's just ridiculous. Um, it's not, it, it, like you're, you don't necessarily, there's, there's many different paths towards, towards success or towards being who you are, like you know, the three picture. Um, you don't have to be a really successful giant million dollar or billion dollar company to, to have made your contribution. Any contribution counts. Um, and, and you have to be very careful with this because when you take money from investors, you're basically, you've strapped yourself to a rocket. And okay, this is a bomb. <laughs> uh, so maybe this is a bit more doomsy than, <laughs> than a rocket. But what you're doing when you're, when you're taking investor money is um, saying, okay, whatever happens, we're going to make this huge exit or we're going to go bust. And those are the two options that are in front of you. And there's nothing left, nothing else. Um, so when you, when you take that step, be very cautious. Uh, don't just take it because you think that you should or because that's what everybody's doing. That's the wrong reason. Because you, you, you know, your map of reality is just totally off. Mm -hmm. And um, even if you're successful as a startup, you might not like where you ended up. Like you might, you know, you might not make the moon. <laughs> okay. So, because I think too little people really realize that there is a, a choice. You, you can choose to maximize your shareholder value. You can choose to create a foundation and run ads for donations. <laughs> or you can choose to make a company that's a social enterprise. I don't know if you've heard that term. Um, this is something new that's coming up, which is basically, it's a company that is running like a company that's providing services, but it is pumping the money back into the community. So you're, you know, you're still living, you, you have a wage, you know, so you're not living like a pauper. Um, uh, so you, you, can, you can have a decent life, but you don't have that crazy upshot of potentially becoming a billionaire, um, but you are consciously choosing to contribute as much as possible to the ecosystem around you. So that's, that's a social enterprise. Uh, that is a possibility. 
um, there's, uh, there's even uh, business forms for that. Like, actually, Mozilla Foundation is kind of that, um, where um, they, they've, they've constructed it in a bit of an interesting way. But like in, in the UK, you can get a, a corporation format that is at the same time a for-profit that is generating money uh, through services, but then uses those uh, to, to build, build, a, um, build a community and build a product. Uh, one example of that is uh, Ghost, the blogging platform, which is um, a competitor of WordPress. And they basically said, we're going to raise money, and all the money is going to go into this foundation, and, and we're going to just use any income that we have to keep making it better. So you're, you don't worry, we're not going to turn into a CMS. <laughs> That's what they basically said. So and then, um, how do you find purpose? But what is purpose? And um, I, w I think that purpose is emergent. It's something that evolves from your interaction with society. Um, and what I mean with that is uh, there's a really interesting TED talk that Andrew Solomon did. Um, I don't know if you, anybody seen it. It's um, it's about and he in which he explains that. Um, it's our hardships that we use to forge meaning in the world. It's our hardships that we use to forge identity. I, and and I, I really love that sentence because it has that duplicity that it's at the same time uh, forging, which could be faking it, <laughs> and using a, a raw resource to build something, uh, something complex, uh, forging, uh, building something bigger. And, and I think that um, you should not force yourself to like, oh, so if you want to build a product, don't, don't worry if you don't know immediately what you're going to do. Take your time. Uh, everything that starts needs time to build and grow. Um, the biggest things, like an ant nest, this is an ant queen, uh, another biology reference, <laughs> um, also starts from one, one single organism. And in, in really short time, they go to a few million. And uh, so purpose, you know, give it time to, to evolve. Because um, like this thing, it's a desert rose. Um, it grows very slowly and it takes a lot of time to grow. Um, this is an evaporate uh, crystal. So the way it works is that um, you've got a little bit of water with some salt. Um, it it uh, crystallizes, then the wind comes, um, turns it around a little bit. And that's how you get these really beautiful crystals. And actually, Drupal is a really good place to do that, because um, I like to call it the Drupal womb, um, which is this sheltered place where there's a lot of people that mean it well, and that want to do something good in the world, um, and that will help you as much as they possibly can to achieve what you're trying to reach. And, um, and so being part of the community gives you that opportunity to really you know, find, find what, what your art is going to be. Oops. Um, so it's a great place to discover purpose. Um, Drupal is also a really good tool for prototyping. Like we are building a product with Drupal now, and um, like last week we needed uh, a tool for doing double-sided incentives, two-sided incentives, which is a it's a growth hacking technique. And um, you know, you just download user points, install it, and ta-da, there you go. Uh, so it makes it really easy to um, to really rapidly prototype and try out things. Um, but another caution, and this is probably one of the most important messages <laughs> of this talk, Drupal is a great incubator, but it is not your market. Unless you are, uh, unless you are a hosting company, or a support company, or something like that, you you really need to think outside of the Drupal market. Uh, it's rather small, actually. Um, even though that it's huge, it's rather small. Um, if you're going to make a niche project, uh, product, um, like a big chance that, that there's not enough people in the Drupal market. Most people that I see thinking about products the first time, they're like, we're going to make something for people like us. Drupal developers, um, let's make, um, I don't know, a coding tool for Drupal developers. I'm like, okay, but there's no market. There's, there's such a small fraction that's not... You know, that's not viable. Um, so that's a very important thing to remember. Take it away if you're thinking about a product. 
Now, how, how did I find my purpose? So as I said, like, um, it's, um, it's been quite an indirect road. And first, like, I, I've always felt like a fake in the Drupal community because I was not a developer. And, and so I've tried to overcompensate doing a lot of events. <laughs> and, um, uh, uh, but, but it's, you know, after some time, after being there for a very long time, you get to know a lot of people, you, you basically, you're part of that community and um, you find out that, you know, it's okay to be who you are and to just do the thing that you've ended up doing and that's okay. Oh, that's just annoying. And um, I, I, had this, I had this realization, um, like my son has been um, really sick. Like, uh, I talked about this uh, big thing that happened in my life. And um, when my son was 16 months old, um, he was diagnosed with cancer. And, um, well, that was quite a shock. And, um, but, well, he's, he's healthy, everything is good, um, he's recovered, he's a really happy little kid, very energetic. But while I was with him in the hospital, while I was sitting next to him, um, at some point I realized, I, I had this realization, uh, that just how many people were actively working and keeping him alive, like, you know, every day. And it's amazing. And, and then how many people contributed to the science that created the medicines to keep him alive? And how many hundred thousands of patients that went through the same protocols to make them safe? And how many millions of people, because I'm a Belgian, so our health insurance actually works, um, <laughs> How many millions of people were paying for that and, and making it so that my company didn't go bankrupt while I was taking care of my son? And, um, and that was, you know, that was a really strong um, realization I, that, you know, this great gratitude towards the world for, for this. So the world is, uh, the universe is, is very unjust. The universe is indifferent to what we do. But it is our communities around us that make it, um, that are generous and that are helping us uh, to live in this world that's much better than it was 10 or 20 years ago. 30 years ago, my son would have been dead. And that's, um, yeah. But then I came down from the hospital. So I come down on the road and I'm walking on the road and I realize, you know, this is exactly the same thing. Like this road has been built by hundreds of people with the money from millions of people, and it's giving to us freely, just to, you know, this fabric of generosity that's around us. Now, I know this is America, and money's probably a little bit more urgent here than it is in Europe, but even here you can see that there is that fabric of generosity, and that even if you have to pay for something, there's still a lot of service that the community provides to you. If you look at just this room, like just this thing, how many people worked on this? How many thousands of hours? Well, I don't know. I, I can't even fathom how much hours of science was needed to make this thing. And, you know, now it's here. I can use it. And, and there's so many things around us that are like that. Um, and, you know, I want to give back. I've, I've got a big debt to settle. <laughs> uh, there's, a, there's a lot of, uh, I owe the Belgian government a lot of tax money. <laughs> also the French government, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, um, they're, um, because, you know, we, we had some of our treatment in Paris. Uh, it's just amazing. And um, what I realized through the years is that for me, um, my purpose, what I am here to do is to be an evangelist is to, um, to be part of community, to help generate community. That is my form of art. And I encourage you to find your form of art, uh, whatever it is. Um, and for me, this presentation is like this. And I don't know, do you know what this, what this picture is? Anybody knows? Yeah. 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 This, this, this wave is as big as an apartment block. And that little dot there, that's a guy surfing it. That's insanity. <laughs> but it is flow. And uh, it is it's this expression of who you are. It is 
being someone and being part of like making the best out of your life, out of the limited time that you have here. Um, so I believe that if you want to make a product, the only, well, according to me, the, the, the best or a good reason to do it is that it is to create your own art. It is to resonate with community and to be uh, out there producing the one thing that only you can produce that will help um, humanity go forward. And you know what that is? That's a Gaudi's model of the Sagrada Familia. He invented, he, he, he uh, designed a building that was so complex that he needed to invent a whole new modeling technique to be able to define how the curves should be so that it would stay up. <laughs> and then they needed to invent concrete to be able to build it. It's insane. <laughs> but, and, and he, well, okay, it's a bit of a sobering story because he, he, he died a really cheap, uh, he, a really poor person. <laughs> he was hit by a metro and nobody knew who he was. But probably we shouldn't talk about that part. Uh, I think that's probably a, a golden middle way <laughs> where you don't have to go that far. So, but um, some more advice. Um, when you bootstrap, be careful. Cash flow. <laughs> you really need some way to project your cash flow. You have to have an idea of, of how much business you have coming in and that while you're busy with your product, you're not forgetting about cash flow. This is something that we've sometimes struggled with. <laughs> and it's um, um, because, you know, consulting is unpredictable as it is, but when your reserves and your, your profit is going into building a product, uh, you have to be very careful. Um, Next thing, open up. If you have a product idea, start talking about it today. Talk with these people. Um, our product right now is only, like, I'll show it to you in a moment if you want. Um, but our product is only what it is today because several people have given us key insights uh, from the community. Like uh, the first prototype that we had, like we did this minimal viable product, which was like, um, so the idea was that we were going to make um, a tool for presenters to share their screen with the rest of the people in a room, which was like super, super niche. Um, so like I, I told my colleague, like, no, let's, let's make something that just works without a presenter. But then I went with that second prototype to, um, to a Drupal user group, and there was someone who said, like, oh, you should be using Selenium, um, the testing language. So we started using that. We did a new prototype did a crowdfunding campaign, raised some money, then built a further, like, continued building, went to uh, DrupalCon Prague, and then um, somebody else said, well, that's really cool, but you should be using a proxy server to inject your JavaScript. And, like, and all these really crazy, insanely good ideas um, have come from the community. And so use the community as your leverage. Um, don't hide what you're doing. Talk with people about it. And, you know, if somebody else is already doing it, somebody else is already doing it. Um, there's somebody else in the community that's building a similar product as us, but he's, his conception for it is completely different. Um, and that's okay. But being open, like for us, being open has paid off a lot. So if you have an idea, go out and talk with people about it. And then keep tuning. <laughs> keep tuning, tuning, tuning until you find resonance. Because um, the first ideas, you know, people didn't care. And now, what we see now, people are really getting excited about what we're doing. So, look for synergies between your product and your service. Um, uh, it's hard. Don't underestimate it. Um, you can do MVPs, but don't forget about your vision. Everybody contributes, even if you're doing service, that's okay, don't worry, that's a valuable thing to do. Um, purpose emerges. Drupal is an incubator, not your end market. Um, don't buy the tech crunch myth and make your own art. Now, um, who's curious <laughs> what we're doing? <laughs> um, so, Everything today is going online, right? Um, your thermostat is online, has an online interface. Your government is online. 
your family and friends have an online interface. It's called Facebook. And it goes on and on and on, and everything is going online. But there's a lot of people that, um, that don't know how to handle that. There's a lot of people that haven't learned how to even fill in simple forms, for whom um, just configuring their Facebook so that it's private is actually a huge challenge. Um, so, and we believe that um, it's important to, to help those people. And um, the thing is that video tutorials and screenshot tutorials are not going to cut it because the internet is changing so fast now today that, um, that it's impossible to keep up with it. Um, like you record a video and, and the next day it might already be outdated because some little graphical element changed somewhere on a page that you passed by and you don't even know it. And people think like, uh, this looks different than what I'm looking at. Uh, and also you've got the two screen thing where you've got screen one where you have the tutorial and then screen two where you're actually doing the thing and you've got to like jump back and forward and, and that doesn't work. It's a car crash. <laughs> And, um, and it's also, it's very, um, you know, we're, we're today in a world of collaboration and, um, and it's this, it's a solo mission where um, some poor bastard <laughs> has been <laughs> assigned to be the documentation writer. Okay, some people like it and you know, I like also writing, but, but often it's a developer who's like assigned to do the documentation. And, and they're doing it on their own. And that's just, it's kind of silly and insane. Like, why don't we work together with the community? Today, when you're writing a Drupal site, when you're making a Drupal site, one of the, one of the things that everybody hates, or all the developers hate in this community, is writing documentation. What is the only thing that we're not collaborating on? Documentation. Like, how insane is that? <laughs> So we're, we're collaborating on modules and, and whenever we have some new functionality, we like commu uh, contribute it back to the community. But when we write documentation to explain how modules work, we just do it in a Google Doc with some screenshots and you know, throw it over the edge and, and nobody ever looks at it again, which is ridiculous. So that's why we built this thing and I'm gonna hope this works. WalkHub is a web application that makes it easy to record and share walkthrough tutorials that play on top of websites. When you need to show a customer or manager how a website works, you simply record it. Add custom descriptions or leave the defaults and share the resulting walkthrough. The real magic, however, happens when someone searches for your web page on WalkUp. We display any walkthroughs that have already been played there and suggest walkthroughs that worked on web pages with a similar structure. With a premium account, you can even use screenings to automatically test and retest what walkthroughs work on your web page. Screenings also generate up to date screenshots that you can use in your documentation and a screening widget that you can embed on your blog. Want to try it out? Sign up to get a beta invite. Um, oops. And, um, oh. oh, why isn't it doing it? View, present. Okay. So, that's a walk up. That's what we're building. <laughs> uh, it's open source. Um, our model is uh, open SaaS. So the idea is that um, you can come and, and use it as a SaaS tool. And then um, if you want to run your own, you just download it and, and have your own walk up. Um, um, yeah, it's kind of like making documentation testable and something that the community collaborates on. Um, because, you know, if, uh, if you have a Drupal site, um, we'll be able to say, like, oh, this is a Drupal site, all these editorial walkthroughs will work here, or all these admin walkthroughs will work here. And that's, uh, that's WalkUp. And I think 
I'm, I'll be doing a buff session uh, tomorrow. I'll have Belgian chocolates there. <laughs> I couldn't bring more, like, you know, I brought like three kilo of chocolates. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I couldn't bring enough for this room. But I do have chocolates for two people that want to go and stand at the door <laughs> for me and collect name cards <laughs> of the people that would be interested in an invite-only beta account for WalkUp. Uh, so if you think that this is interesting and you would like to have a beta invite, um, like who, who wants to stand at the door and get a really good Belgian chocolate? <laughs> okay, that's one. Someone over there also? One. Anybody interested? You want to take? Okay, cool. So, um, um, yeah, and, uh, and come, come and check out the, the presentation. There's also flyers on the chairs next to the two doors. Okay. Thank you. Are there any questions? Yeah? So you've created a lovely piece of art. What is your monetization? <laughs> so the, the monetization, so the way it will work, it's a bit tricky because it's open source, right? The, the way that we imagine it to work is that um, if you're, um, so, the thing we're going to charge for is the screenings. So creating walkthroughs or recording or playing walkthroughs is free. But if you want to have them with the pictures and, and them to look nice, you're going to have to pay for that. So And because we're going to do this for all of the internet, so people, people will be able to just record walkthroughs on a random website, even if they don't own that site. But if you then want to claim ownership over that site's documentation, then you have to pay us for that and you know, to make it nicer also. Okay. Mm, but you know, you can download it and have your own. Yeah. Yeah. That's. A, it's a very long story. <laughs> we started with Selenium IDE, um, but then. Um, uh, it just didn't work <laughs> because we, we were recording stuff that we couldn't play uh, because um, you know Selenium is this really complex thing and it records a whole crazy crap load of things and in, in like slightly different commands and then you know we couldn't play it so uh, ultimately after we were seeing that people were having a lot of trouble at <laughs> using it we just decided to throw it out and make our own recorder so now the recorder the way it works is is um, it's a, you know, a drive-by wire. Have you heard of that? It's a principle. Now, today's cars, instead of directly steering the steering wheel, uh, well, I think the steering wheel also, or definitely the gas, instead of directly interacting with the engine, you're interacting with a computer that then does the action. Right? So what we're doing is we've put a layer in between your mouse and the site. And when you're clicking, you're clicking on our layer. And then our layer clicks on the site. And that way we can record everything that happens. And we're sure that the things that we record, we can also play. Which is like, <laughs> that's innovation <laughs> right there. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're using, well, we're using um, the, the stuff is recorded in Selenis. So we're using Selenium commands. Um, uh, that we've extended with, with the, the description field. Um, but we're, we've implemented our own player in JavaScript that actually plays it. So that, you know, you don't need to, you need, don't need to install anything on your site. You just, you can, you can load it over our proxy. So I've got a walkthrough that runs on the White House's website. <laughs> They're not our customer yet. <laughs> so so we're, um, we're just, um, we load their sites and inject our JavaScript over our proxy. And then we can record that way without installing anything. No browser plugin, no site plugin, nothing. Uh, and then we can also play it without installing anything. It's a bit brittle <laughs> because the, the, you know, proxies and cross-site scripts and that doesn't always match. But it's, um, but you know, in a lot of cases, it does work. Yeah, yeah, Ronald. So one of the challenges we're having is tracking how much we're spending on this stuff. 
Ja. <lacht> ja. Ja. Um, I'm not sure if I'm a good business person, <laughs> um, but basically, you know, we're well. First of all, this is, has legs, right? Because we've we've done a crowdfunding campaign where we had 49 people uh, pitching in money to do this for Drupal, right? And now we're doing it for all of the internet. So, you know, <laughs> we're going to do another crowdfunding campaign, by the way, uh, starting uh, somewhere early next week. So, once something has legs, <laughs> you just you you just keep going, uh, or at least that's that's what I'm doing. Is it the right thing? I don't know. Um, I, I think, but there it comes in that this is also art, and if you think with a pure business mind, like you don't do this, right? Uh, then you know you have to be crazy to do it like that. Um, I, I, I strongly believe in it, that this is the right thing to do and that it's going to be huge and that it's going to have an enormous impact uh, and that you know, I'm going to earn a decent living from it. <laughs> but the amount of, like, you know, I, I, I think you have to be, you just have to be validating fast enough so that you're, you always should be validating and, and verifying that there's a market and that people actually want what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And basically, if there's a product type thing, if you have a project in Harvest and, and you spend time against it, you report your time against it. So you can do that, but then it's still, that doesn't solve the hard question. <laughs> is when do you stop? <laughs> that, is the, that is the hard question. Yeah. It, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a whole lot. And it's free. You can just download it from GitHub. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. We used to do it so that it was only during bench time that we did it. But then once we really had traction, we just said, okay, dedicated people. First we had one dedicated person, then two, now we have two and a half. At the moment there's three and a half working on it right now from a company of 17 people. So that's a lot. Don't forget the name cards. <laughs> um, other questions? No? Okay, so if you want a beta invite, um, my helper over there, <laughs> the winner of the fantastic chocolate, <laughs> um, is, uh, can take your name card and then we'll add you to the, mail, uh, to the mailing list that will also get you a beta invite. Uh, and then you'll get all the information. Yeah? So is that the same as the That's the same, but one thing I've learned, this, oh, this is valuable for, for you when you're doing this kind of stuff. Flyers don't work. Links don't work. I pull a whole full room, like with 40 people at the educa Higher Education Summit, and three people sign up. Like people are like, wow, this is cool, we need this, and only three sign up, which is ridiculous, because I'm sure that a lot more are interested. And, so, and they have the flyer, and they're like, yeah, I'll do that later, and then they lose it, and then, you know, or it gets stuck in between all the other swag, and they forget about it. So that's why I'm doing the, the name card thing. <laughs> So I make it even easier for you to sign up. <laughs> you don't have to do anything for it. Okay? Okay, thank you very much.